Welcome to the Career Revolution interview series, the place to be, to be, to find inspiration and unpack your own unique career revolution. This is an interview series where I love to talk to people who've had unusual or off the beaten track career revolutions. My name is Licia Deering and I'm a career strategist. And today's episode is called Episode Me, because we are going to be talking to Jesse Bosch, who's the CEO and founder of a proudly South African one-way video and interview platform called Interview Me. Without any further ado, I'm going to bring Jesse into the studio so we can get started. Hello, Jesse, and welcome. Hey, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to chat to you. It's wonderful to have you here. It's so exciting. And I'd love to say to everybody who's catching this, whether you're watching it live, whether you're watching it on replay, let us know in the comments whether you're catching it on LinkedIn, Facebook, or on podcast version or YouTube. Share with us where in the world you're watching it from. I love how globalized we all are in a sense and it really inspires me to find out where in the world people are and what where they're tuning in to the discussion we're going to get straight into things with jesse so yeah gosh jesse you were in deve- interview me was in development for a year you launched october 2021 yeah. In the height of the pandemic, the uncertainty, the insecurity, we're going to talk all about Interview Me in a little bit. I want to know where, how you started it, the process, what help you need. And I really want you to tell people and educate them about this awesome platform because I think it is revolutionary in its own right. But I want to know more specifically your revolution story. So, sure. Tell us where it starts. I mean, (laughs) what got, yeah, like how did it all begin? Sure. So I think we'll go all the way back to the tender age of 18. Um, When I had finished school, I got a varsity entrance and I was considering going to varsity. And I had a friend that was in the motor industry and that worked at Mercedes Benz. And they were like, Jesse, you should come and work for Merck. And I had a bit of a gift of the gab and I was like, I said to my mother, mom, I think that the idea of driving a Merc and earning money at the age of 18 was just so much more appealing to me than going Equal to Boston. success. That was your definition of success. That's what <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Drive a fancy car and, and earn money. That was my ultimate goal at the age of 18. And I just couldn't be even interested in going to varsity in hindsight. Probably should have thought about that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I started my sales career, I guess straight out of school, um, selling Mercedes-Benz cars, sold to some high-profile people. And I was doing incredibly well. And then the market t- took a bit of a tank. And I had a big traveling itch in me. I really wanted to go and see the world. And I had a friend that suggested, why don't you go and work on the ships in the US? And I was like, oh, I don't mm. want to work on an oil rig. And I don't want to be a cleaning person. That was just not something that I wanted to do at the time, right? But were you even yet 20? I mean... No, I wasn't. I was, I was, I was 19. Um, and they, uh, they, they gave me these contact details for a company called Park West Gallery, which is the largest privately owned gallery in the US. Um, and they sold... Art, art galleries. Yeah, art galleries. So, I mean, Renoir, Picasso, Salvador Dali, Chagall, all these very famous artists. And... I got in touch with them. We did a bit of a telephonic interview and they said, well, we'll fly you out to Michigan in the States um, for a trial week. Um, And if you make it and if you can learn how to bid call like a proper auctioneer, you know, really speak fast, um, then we'll consider if we want to put you on a ship. And they flew me down at their expense. Um, I kind of treated it like a bit of a party. I mean, I was 19. Like, what do I know, right? Um, yeah, and getting flown across to the States. Exactly. And I was like, what's South going Africa? on? We were so like down in the southern hemisphere of the world. I mean, that in itself is exciting. But I actually want to interrupt, pause for a bit before you keep going into that, because that story is starting to develop. I want to just acknowledge that at the age of 18, being put on a car showroom sales floor and like having to make like, that's a pretty 
one on the one hand tough ticket for an 18 year old to like schmooze and make it and sell you know like I think that's phenomenal but it was probably like the best place for you to learn like that whoever identified that you had a bit of a gift of the gab there was there was so much more there in terms of what you enjoyed and what you could do and form bonds with people and develop relationships but what was it like? I mean, just in terms of how quickly was it before you started making sales and how easy was it for an 18 year old to sell to these high rollers? Because I mean, not everybody buys a Merc. Yeah, absolutely. So um, at the time, it, when I came into it, I think everyone doubted me and they're like, who's this young spring chicken that's come into it? Mm. It was sales guys that had been in the motor industry for 15 years already. Um, and I think I had a bit of something to prove. Um, mm. so I think what I did that kind of separated me from this was I really just got to know the product incredibly well. Um, I think that building a rapport with someone is fairly easy, but building credibility in terms of your own brand is a tough gig. And so if you don't mm. know what you're talking about, and if someone walks into a dealership and says, I want to spend one and a half million rand on a car, tell me about this car. And you say, well, you can get it in five different colors and it's got a two change and that's not going to cut it. Exactly. Yeah. So I really had to make sure that my product knowledge around the different vehicles was solid. And then I was the first person to jump up as soon as someone walked into a dealership, whether it was a guy that had flip flops on and a hole in his T-shirt or a suit. And funny story just associated to that. My, I sold 10 1 million Rand cars to a guy that walked into the dealership with flip flops, board shorts and a hole in his T-shirt. Um, and yeah. so many people had normally have said, well, this guy's probably a tire kicker, car sales terms. Um, and that really started getting me to grips with how to, you know, go back my sales and really what my approach would be with different types of clientele. I would know how to deal with the male or female, like there were mm. different requests, different feedings. And I mean, that's, and that, that's a bit of a generalization in saying that, but I mm. did learn different tactics and mm. techniques that would assist me in closing deals a lot quicker. And, and at, mm. I mean, within three months, um, I was the top salesman. And I remember the dealer principal at the time, he, he said to the sales guys, whoever's the top salesperson this month gets to choose the car they drive for the month. And I chose a, like a 2 million Rand Merc. I drove it out the dealership and my, my boss phoned me and said, bring it back. You're not taking that car because you <laughs> could hear me going down the road. But that's just another fun story. <laughs> So it was that, I mean, in a way, perhaps being 18, it was your youth, it was your enthusiasm, and in a way, your hunger and your lack of experience that just kind of propelled you forward. I mean, that's another whole discussion for another whole time. That's yeah. sort of, that. that's the how to win in sales <laughs> interview. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, we, we could be chatting for days about just my motor industry alone, and I've been in a, a, a few different industries. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, carry on then. So you're, 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 you've are you're landed in the States. You've got this week's trial with yeah. an art, high-end art gallery. Yeah. And they're trying to teach you how to roll it like an auctioneer. Exactly. And you I mean, we had to learn about the different artists. I had no passion for art whatsoever, to be honest. Um, but I obviously now needed to believe in the product and in auctions, if you someone says, well, tell us about Salvador Dali or Chagall or Renoir, you need to be able to talk about, you know, you know, um, and I treated it like a bit of a holiday and I, I wasn't particularly serious about it. And then it came to the end of the trial week and I said, unfortunately, you didn't make the cut um, and we're sending you back to South Africa. Um, and I said, please don't put me on an oil rig. And before you even send me back to South Africa, I've created <laughs> such a big expectation back at home. I can't just go home now. Like, I'm sorry. And yeah. classic immigrant state. It's like, I'm not going back to me, exactly. but I'm not turning around. <laughs> and what happened was they then put me on the largest cruise ship in the world, which at the time was the Oasis of the Seas, um, a Royal Caribbean line. And I started off as an art auctioneer's assistant, which is called an associate. I would stand in the crowd and just say, yep, 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 when people are calling bids. Um, and about two months later, that auctioneer fell ill and needed to head back home. And they said, well, the ship is yours. Um, and I ran with it. And that's kind of where my art auctioneering career started. Um, did incredibly well, saw the world, 
Um, I wanted to come back home after about two years and there was a South African in one of my land-based VIP auctions in Miami. So I managed to move away from ships and start doing proper VIP auctions in Jamaica, Argentina, Miami, um, wow. Cozumel, an island just off Mexico. And a lot of art auctioneers used to collect art on ships or just off because of international waters. It was tax-free. Um, and so I did really well there, lived the absolute dream. Um, lost a lot of weight, partied my face off, made money, didn't save a cent. Um, and I wanted to come back to South Africa. And there was At a the South right African. Age of how old are you now? You're like, you've just had your 21st. So you're 21. Yeah, exactly. 22. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I wanted to come back and there was a South African in my auction. And he said, are you South African? And I said, yes, because when I was in the States, I had to put on a bit of a radio voice, the South African slang and all the accent mm. was like, what is that guy saying? So I did add a bit of a twang. Um, mm. Anyway. And he said, well, if you ever want a job back in South Africa, call me. And it was kind of just perfect timing. Um, and that led me to, to my media monitoring career, which we'll, we'll chat about. But I mean, um, my real career started just after that, where I joined a company called Meltwater, mm. which was, it is now the largest editorial and social media tracking company globally. Mm. Um, and I joined them, yeah, it's like 23 or something like that, 22 um there it was a startup in south africa in terms of the south african operation it was very big in the us the, um, our headquarters were actually the old twitter headquarters um i think in la and we started with a team of four um with a very aggressive sales approach um so i just started off as a sales executive um about five months later i got promoted to sales manager hired a bunch of sales people and other people to join the team and then about 12 months later i was promoted to managing director of africa Wow. Um, we had obviously had a really cool growth spurt, if you want to call it that. And we, we were smoking it. We were averaging 40% week, I mean, month on month growth, which was epic. Um, mm. And now, I mean, the South African operation I probably is about 100 people strong, which is good. That's just the South African wing. And then they've got Nigeria, Ghana, a whole bunch of other branches. But yeah. And they've gone, they're massive, absolutely. So, up until this point where your kind of corporate career starts to kick in and you're back home, got a great job, and you're really seeing some great growth. Had at any point, I mean, what, what I'm not hearing, and naturally so, because you start the story when you're 18, is I knew I wanted to be this, or I knew I wanted to be that. You were just going for experience, chasing some travel, tr looking for some success, earning some good money, and partying around the world and meeting, you know, sort of whining and dining and having fun, kind of. Yeah. So that, that was really it. Um, interesting like like that's that's everyone's story in a way but but what i what i'm so fascinated about your story is that you you had this time and space to do that in a sense that there wasn't any oh, i'm gonna have to get serious and start my career or I, i've now got to kind of pull back and, and and start planning things like eventually you knew that you were going to come home and you were going to start a corporate career but you kind of backed yourself all the way along the line and this 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 sales people connection kind of the closer closing deals and um it's kind of persuading and influencing people stuck with you and that's the like the golden thread and those are the talents that you took into meltwater am yeah. i kind of reading it correctly exactly i think but i mean it also i mean i got a lot of good advice from from people in the past even from just family and then colleagues at, at meltwater where there were i think two things that the guys said to me is i mean so my mom said to me when i was young jesse aim for the sky land on the trees aim for the trees yeah. land on the ground and she's like where do you want to and i don't want to be on the ground so i've always just shot for the top and I've, I've, I've put myself into awkward conversations with some really high level people and i just put it out there um and then another kind of saying that i kind of live by is good things don't come to those that you know are patient i think good things come to those that go and get them um, mm. and I've tried to, to, to use that in my life going forward where I don't like to wait around for things. Yes. Patience is a quality that one needs to learn. And, um, but I've never been one to sit around and wait for something to happen because nine out of 10 times it, it I don't think it would have. Mm, absolutely. And you are, you, you know, I think sales in itself has a lot of people, would say, well, I'm not good at sales, or I can't close a deal, or I haven't got the confidence, or I haven't got that. And you kind of, I would, 
I wouldn't say fell into it, but you st stood into it on the showroom floor back in the day when you were selling Mercedes and were like, well, hey, you know, I'm going to walk up to this guy and sell him something. Like, you, you just have a very refreshing attitude around it, um, I think. And perhaps that's part of the career revolution. That's part of the story, you know? I think, I think it is, you know, but I mean, I, in the role that I'm in, I, I chat to salespeople, I chat to people that have never sold, that are considering it. And there's this stigmatization around sales and mm. you, you're, you're a seller. And selling is actually not that hard. If you can hold the conversation and you're going to understand the client's problem and how to solve it, that's mm. selling. It's not like, hey, mister, I will give you 20% discount if you sign today. It's not like you're walking <laughs> through a macro aisle. Um, mm. You know, sales is not car sales per se anymore. Um, it's a lot more. And I think what you see on TV from a salesperson to what it actually is in real life are very different. So yeah. I think that, you know, for me, sales was the best career starter for me because mm. I learned so many different aspects of the business. I had to deal with finance departments. I had to deal with, you know, the marketing divisions. I needed to mm. chat with HR frequently about hiring people. So I got to learn about all these different departments and how they all come together. And it also just gave me a bit of a more rounded view on business as a whole, um, yeah. which is kind of led me to where I am now, where I think I have a better understanding of how business operates and what clients expect and what we need to do to make sure we deliver. Exactly. So let's get into it. So fast forward, meltwater and a successful career, like 40% growth year on, you know, month on month, month on month. On month yeah. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. You're going to get headhunted from this conversation. Somebody's going to go, we need him as our mass sales director. <laughs> how did you go from corporate to like startup founder ceo start like what was the revolution there what what took place sure. what happened so i think well after meltwood i was headhunted for for other various roles etc um and then i joined probably one of the largest e-hailing companies globally second to uber um mm -hmm. as sales direct or head of Af sales for africa um, and I was, it was, I was going really well. And I've always had this dream of having my own business. I never knew what it was. And I sat back and I thought, well, what, what would I do? I don't know where to start. Like, I don't know, like, I don't want to sell chappies. I don't want to make boxes. I don't want to open a car wash. I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do something. And I was like, well, what is the typical challenge that you're currently facing in the role that you're in and other roles? And that was hiring people. Yeah. I was like, I have sat through so many back-to-back -back interviews where I'd jump onto a call with a candidate and two minutes into the call, I'd realize that perhaps the candidate wasn't a fit or, uh, and then out of courtesy, I'd stay on the call with that candidate for 30, 40 minutes, which consumed huge amounts of time in my day. And I didn't have, I needed to run a sales team, not be in back-to-back -back interviews and reading mm. CVs all day. And then I'd like a candidate and I'd send it to a colleague and then the colleague would say, what were you thinking? And I was just like, this is a nightmare. And I was like, Oh, okay. So here is the problem. Mm. I want to be able, I wish a candidate could like jump out of a CV at me and be like, Hey, this is who I am. You should hire me for these reasons. Because then I'd be like, cool, that one's good. That one's not so good. I want to meet with this candidate. And so I did a bit of research and found that one way interviews are very big in the U S and Europe. Very. Yeah. Um, almost and so just much didn't big. exist in South Africa. Yeah. And there was or no Africa. one in South Africa doing it. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so then, I phoned a couple of big corporates in South Africa wearing a hat that I had already developed this thing, which I hadn't. And they were like, yeah, yeah, we make use of one-way video interviews. We use a company based in Seattle in the U.S. And I was like, why? We, you know, we're South African. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, here is my gap. And um, I approached what, who is now my business partner. And she's a fairly well-off businesswoman, um, ex-CIO of PPS Insurance. And she said to me, Jesse, let's do it. This is an amazing idea. Um, and we then decided, okay, well, now what? We, we've got this idea. We kind of know what it needs to look and feel like. We're not developers. What do we do? So I'm going to pause you there for a yes. little bit because we're getting into the the, um, the startup story, which is going to be so interesting and juicy. When you were in the the last corporate role, when you were your last role as an employee, yes. What was it? Why was the timing then? You knew you wanted to do something for yourself. You knew that that was going to be on the horizon. But 
you could have, I mean, you could have done that in five years' time. You could have done that in ten, like, what was the revolution? Like, what, what happened there? Had, did it have anything to do with the pandemic? No, like, what? No. So I just sat back and I figured we are also very good at procrastinating and talking about cool ideas. And there was one night that I got home. I wasn't having a bad day, but I was just like, I keep playing what could potentially be in my head. and But I also in my head was like, well, but what happens if it doesn't work? And I think mm. that doesn't work was holding me back. And eventually I just said, I need, if I can't, if I want to do this in 10 years time, I'm going to have to take make, a gap. I'm going to have to then make it, the company work a lot quicker because I've only got a few more years of operating or whatever it may be. Mm. And I just said, there's no time like the president. Yeah. If I lose my house and I lose my car, like these are materialistic things and we will survive. We have people that we can contact and, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to suck. But mm. I, I said to my wife, we need to take the leap. Um, and I just figured like there's no time in the presence. COVID obviously gave me a slight more belief that this was a really good idea, idea at the time just because of the remote working situation. Mm. And I was like video interviews. A lot of people are doing Perfect. team calls on that. And then I just said, well, let's just do it. And I kind of yeah. threw caution to the wind. Um, with no savings because all my savings went into the development of the software and we just kind of closed our eyes and we pray and we and we just work really hard. Wow, wow. So it really was just a, a knowing that you wanted to work for yourself. What you were 100% sold out to was you were not going to work on someone else's agenda, even though you were happy. There was no friction, but you just knew you were kind of like treading water. It just wasn't you know the ultimately the, the the real game for you so it was that knowing of wanting to work for yourself and then you kind of went into what problems can I solve like at, you know like I could do this 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 you said car wash that you were sort of like you know could, could I put art online and sell it you were probably going yeah. through all the things that you'd done and you were yeah. like well right now in my experience as somebody a sales director trying to hide this was the problem so it was really they say that um, necessity is the mother of all invention it was out of necessity that this super cool thing came. And then, like, you, yeah, you did your research. And then the fact that South African companies were paying offshore to some Seattle company, you know, that was just ka-ching, ka-ching, let's make this work. So exactly. um, what was that process? I just I almost wanted for people listening here because I know all of my clients that I work with, they know what their calling is. They know what it is. That they know more, they know what they want to do. They just don't know what that looks like. Let me rephrase that. They know what their calling is. It's to be an entrepreneur or to be somebody that shifts the education space. Order. They know where it is. They just don't know what it looks like. Like you knew you wanted to work for yourself. You knew you wanted to take the risk of being a founder and going into a startup. You didn't necessarily know what that looked like. Yeah. You went through the process and you figured it out. So can you like be more specific in terms of the time frame? Because I just think there's so much learning that anybody hearing and watching this can can take. Like you were working in the day and then you were starting to think and things like, was it yeah. over a couple of weeks? Was it a month? Like when was that like that incubation in your mind from sure. bam and then then you went? Like what was it? So we obviously had the idea. We actually I had the idea came home one day, chatted to a mate, which is now my CIO. We had a few beers in my kitchen. I've actually got a photo of us drawing on my mirror in terms of what we want this thing to look like and do. And really? hopefully I'll post that picture up soon. We've got new offices coming and I kind of want to do then and now. Um, but had a few beers, stood up and we were like, you know, what now? And I think I obviously didn't want to leave my current job there and then. Mm. Um, so exactly that where during the day i would have my day job and then in the evening it would be we'd have to literally draw it out and like okay what does this button do and why are we doing this button and kind of just work out a flow then we put together like a like a workflow diagram in terms of user experience and what we want our clients to experience and then we had a proper visual and then what we needed to do is say right who's going to go and build this thing mm -hmm. and then there was a huge time difference between the initial guys that started the development, because we have now locally developed the platform, but we had guys overseas starting it initially just because it was a little bit more affordable. Yeah. Um, and then we would like have to now try and balance. So 
before work, we would schedule meetings at 5 a.m. because the company that we were dealing with was three hours ahead so that it didn't kind of correlate with my current working hours. Mm. Um, and it was a lot of that for about nine months where it was wow. there, just the initial development. And then about two months before we actually launched was then when I decided, okay, I'm now going to resign and leave my job. But it was a lot of late nights, a lot of planning, and it was pretty much on a non-existent budget. So we were wheeling and dealing, negotiating. We built our own websites initially. We did a crash course on WordPress, no cooking clue. You know, so it was just trying to new and figure things out and then, you know, just watching videos of different corporates in terms of what their challenges are and culture requirements. Just really trying to get to grips with what we're trying to achieve as the long-term goal. We had obviously short, medium and long, but what's the vision of the business? And that's what we were really mm. trying to pin down. And it must have been, I mean, to be a fly on the wall when you went in to resign. How much did you tell the company that you were leaving? Like, did you sort of say, I've been hustling for nine months and I've now got this thing and I'm going to start. Were you like, I'm out of here, I'm going to do my own thing. Like, how much detail did you go to? So, I'll give you some detail. So, I mean, without telling you the company, as I think most people can pick it, uh, figure it out, but the CEO... Um, is a guy in, in in Estonia and he's 29 years old, but he's like a billionaire. Um, he's one of the most successful um, ride hailing companies globally. And when I resigned, I obviously let my, my global sales director know and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, and I actually tried to sell it to him in that call. <laughs> um, where I said, well, you've got 400 vacancies open. I was your head of sales for Africa. I know exactly what challenges we're facing yeah. and this is going to solve that problem. He had a bit of a chuckle, kind of played it off, didn't want me to go, but he said, well, there's nothing I can do if you're starting your own business. If you're going to a competitor or whatever it may be, we understand, but you're starting your own business, which you understand. And then I actually reached out to the global CEO and I tried to sell to him too. And he also had a good <laughs> chuckle and he said, you're cheeky, Jesse, but we love it because, you know, and they could see the passion, but um, it was quite a frank chat. And, you know, they, they, they could quite evidently see that I was passionate about the idea and I decided, well, that's what I want to do. And, they said, we, we totally respect that. And they're a great company. I mean, they're one of those companies that are all for entrepreneurship and, you know, pushing people into to new mm. different avenues. So whether someone is in marketing and we've now moved them into a different, you know, vertical within the business, they're all for, for people growth, um, which has been great. So, I mean, there were absolutely no hard feelings and it was a, it was quite a casual conversation. And it um, sort of ended of well, yeah. So I know I came across you on LinkedIn because um, you've been super smart, you've been completely consistent, and you're harnessing the power that that is to to really grow interview me. And I was I just I, you you kept saying proudly South African. This is amazing. Like we're revolutionizing the way things are done. You like it, it, everything that you said completely spoke to me, and I just stopped. One of the posts just completely grabbed my attention. I looked and I was like, this is amazing like this is incredible and I think I left a long comment and my previous career was in recruiting and I mean oh my gosh what we could have done with interview me back then I mean I, I worked for a recruitment consultant I did some in-house work within a corporate as well um, within hiring sales teams and yeah you know as you say to have a candidate jump out of the CV just the logistics to be able to get <laughs> then, you know, to meet with the rest of the team in itself was get the interview me platform going. So um, I, I absolutely love it. And I think it's phenomenal. And I just want to salute you for, Thank you. I'm so glad that you kept pushing. What can I do? What can I do? I want to own a business. Thank goodness you didn't give up. Thank goodness you didn't think, nah, I'll do it next year. I'll plan my holiday and safely, quietly disappear into the corporate world and lose the spark within me. I'm so glad the revolution was calling you from within because if you hadn't have made that shift and if you hadn't made that decision, you know, you, you wouldn't be pushing the boundaries around hiring people, the way we work and everything within, yes, South Africa, but within Africa and within the world. So thank goodness, you know, you, you're, you're definitely showing the way. So thank tell you. us now about Interview Me. I mean, yes, you're going to, in the comments, we're going to leave links and stuff. I know... I mean, I'd love to invite anybody who's listening to this who might be an HR corporate or even a recruiter to jump onto a call with Jesse and get some, you know, have a free demo, have a look at it, check it out because it's a super, super awesome platform. 
tell them you saw him in the career revolution <laughs> discussion, but tell us like, how's it going and what help do you need? So yeah, sure. tell us about it. How's it going? What help you need? <laughs> so in, in very short, um, interview me is essentially a one way video interviewing platform that allows you to interview candidates without having to conduct the interview in person. We understand that the human element in interviews is incredibly important. We're not trying to replace that. What we're trying to do is assist with the screening and first interview process side of things just to help you identify who you actually want to interview in person. For me, all I want to do is because we're proudly South African is I just want companies to just spread the word. If you're, if maybe it's not a fit for you or perhaps you're not in a position right now, just let other people know that we exist and we're around because I think that's what we all we can ask for really is ultimately sh share a little bit of news and if you want i'd love to give you a free trial or a demo of the platform just to show you the value if it works for you great if it doesn't totally understand but i guess the proof is in the pudding you don't buy a car without taking it for the test drive um i want to give you a test drive of interview me and the platform to be clear works across industry it's not just for hiring salespeople. it's in any industry you could use it for you know, a massive big recruitment drive, um, internship recruitment drive. You could use it for senior level, strategic, you know, three interviews at a CEO level. It's across industry, across levels, and it just streamlines everything. For HR, they can customize their own, you know, their dashboards customize with their own branding. So anybody that comes through the system feels as if they're being interviewed by the company. It's completely personalized, hyper-personalized, in fact. Um, I love the demo that you gave me. It was fascinating. And um, yeah, so what's next for Interview Me? Just to really grow and solidify within South Africa and then start taking over the continent and the world? What's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what's So we're a software as a service, so we're constantly evolving. We've got a full team um, of developers, and I think we've got the video interviewing portion down. We want to start getting some artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning built into the platform, start making recommendations. A lot of the companies that we're chatting to say we have an ATS platform, which most of these bigger corporates do. They just don't have a video interviewing tool. So a lot of companies are using us alongside their ATS. But what we're trying mm. to do is we're actually going to start evolving to build a form of an ATS into our platform so that there's no need. Nice. Because a lot of the companies we've chatted to in South Africa are also outsourcing that where the ATS platforms that they're using are international ATSs. So South Africa has it. But I would say short term is we just want to continuously grow and we want to acquire some new clients and really just better the platform for both the clients and for candidates. We want to make that mm. user journey and experience super cool, super fun, user friendly. Um, and then we'll see where the product takes us because we're such a cool young startup. We're taking you know, feedback from a lot of these people within the HR industry and saying, what about this? And could you do background checks? And could you do assessment games and whatever it may be? So we're taking all yeah. of this on board and we're building it in because we're such a small team, we're very agile. So the kind of decision-making process for us is a quick one. And we just want to add value. That's ultimately it. So that's the short-term goal. Long-term, we want to, well, not even long-term, in about the next eight to 12 months, we want to expand into Africa because we believe that that's mm. an untouched market. Mm, absolutely. I love that. I love that, that your agility now is giving you the opportunity to not only hyper-personalize, but customize too for your clients. So everybody listening, hop on interview me, train now, get in now so that you've got this opportunity. I mean, wow. If you start heading into AI, AI um, data analytics and ATS functionality, that is just a one-stop shop that's going to wrap things up. I mean, that's phenomenal. So um, I, I just don't understand what the hesitation would be, apart from not understanding what Interview Me is, not having enough information. It just kind of doesn't, you know, boggles my mind to think that anybody would go, no, nah, I'm not going to use a tool that's going to make me time, you know, make my, buy me time and make the whole hiring process super duper streamlined and effective. It's like, it's... It's a no-brainer. <laughs> I like I like your thought process. It is a no-brainer, but I mean, I understand that people. Some people have done things in a certain way, and they've become familiar with the kind of processes mm. that they've been used to. And people are scared of change, and I totally respect that and understand that. And that's why we want to give them the demos. If they have ATSs, we'll integrate into that ATS. We've got a couple of big conversations with existing ATSs this week and next about integrating 
because yeah. ATS is not number one for us right now. It's something that's coming, which we'll pull data. But let's integrate. Let's give you the best of both worlds. But just try it out. There's absolutely nothing. It's not like we, you, you jump on a demo call and all of a sudden you get an invoice. We just want to show you what value we're going to bring to the business. That is it. And, and then it's also not like there's hefty, complicated contracts and no, money, you know, money, can't money get money out money. of the contract and you're locked in for 18 months. And I mean, you're, you, you know, you, you showed me so much in the demo about what it takes if somebody's interested and it's pretty much plug and play and off you go and it doesn't work. That's fine. Concentrate, you know, uh, cancel. There's no big yeah. um, overcommitment here. So Yo, so exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I you. really appreciate you spending some time talking with us on Career Revolution. Um, you've shared some great things. And while you were talking, I was thinking, I know that there's somebody somewhere who is either kind of, I don't think I'm good at sales, and they're going to be so inspired by your story of just jumping in and doing it. Um, and equally so, the the individual who just feels like they've got something in them that they want to bring to the world, that they want to create, they've got a problem they want to solve. And, you know, should I do it? Should I not? Because you can talk yourself around in, you can oh, talk yourself out of any good idea. Crazy. And you just did it. So everybody reach out to Jesse, whether you're interested in interviewing me, whether you just want to say, you know, how's it, Jesse? This is great. He, as you can see, is Mr. Super Approachable, <laughs> and um, we're going to have to get you back, and you're going to have to explain about all of the tattoos, but that'll be another <laughs> series. <laughs> Thanks so Jesse. much, Jesse. I really have, I mean, I appreciate you having me. What, you, what you're doing is super cool, um, and we really appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. It's um, likewise straight back at you, and thanks for your time, and I'll be seeing you online. Hop off, everybody. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.